In this video, we're going to review the concept of arc length, which we learned in Calculus 2, and then we're going to extend it to curves in three dimensions. So let's go back over the basic idea. I have a curve, and we're going to start with a curve which is in the xy plane. I'd like to know the length from P to Q. So this highlighted portion of the curve right there. We're going to break up the curve, put some points on the curve, and draw some line segments, and then calculate the length of those line segments using the distance function, and then add up the lengths as an approximation. So we can do a little bit of uh, algebra here. We could call the difference in the x delta x sub i, and we have the delta y sub i. And we're going to assume, like we normally do, that uh, the delta x is constant. And so we're going to factor out that delta x from the radical. Then we'll let the number of line segments go to infinity. And that will give us an integral which is the formula for arc length uh, from Calculus 2. Now also in Calculus 2, we might have looked at a parametric representation of a curve. So we're given two functions, x and y, which are both functions of a parameter t, and t goes between alpha and beta. And so in this case, our delta x would just be the difference between x evaluated at t sub i and x evaluated at t sub i minus 1, and a similar expression for the delta y. And then I do a more algebra. I can multiply and divide by delta t. That gives me this expression. And I let the number of line segments go to infinity, and that gives me an integral where I have on the inside now, something that really does remind me of the Pythagorean theorem. We're having a dx dt squared plus dy dt squared, and then we take the square root of it. Now, taking the square root of the sum of the squares in the Pythagorean theorem is something that we've seen with vectors as well. So let's say I have a vector representation of the curve with component f of t and g of t. And then I could calculate the length of the curve using essentially the same formula that I had for the parametric representation. My f prime of t is really my dx dt, and g prime of t is really my dy dt. But what is this expression inside the integral. This is called the integrand. What is that integrand? Well, r prime of t would be just the vector with component functions f prime of t and g prime of t. So this expression is the length of r prime of t. So we have a very compact formula for the arc length in vector form. And moreover, if we have three component functions. So if we have a space curve with a vector representation with component functions f, g, and h, then the length of the curve is, again, just applying the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula. I would take the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of r prime, which is, again, just the length of r prime of t. So this is a very useful, very compact uh, form for calculating arc length. So let's look at an example. I've got a curve. It is a helix. We should recognize this as a helix about the z-axis. And we're going to calculate its length starting from the point 2, 0, 0, going to 2, 0, and 2 pi. So um, 
Note that uh, at the point two zero zero t must equal zero, and at two zero two pi t must equal two pi. So really, our a value is zero, and our b value is two pi. Those will be our bounds of integration. So what do I need to do? Find the length of r prime of t. So first, let's find r prime. Take the derivative of each of the component functions. And then we will take the square root of the sum of the squares. Now here we have sines and cosines. So we have an expression with 4 sine squared t plus 4 cosine squared t. I can factor out the 4. And I recognize that sine squared t plus cosine squared t is just 1. So the length here is actually constant. The length of r prime of t is a constant radical 5. So using our formula for the arc length, then I would take the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the length of r prime of t, which would just be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of radical 5 dt, which is just 2 pi radical 5. Now, looking ahead, the arc length formula uh, is useful, but another thing that's useful is to define an arc length function. So I'm going to define s of t as the integral from a to t of r prime of u du. So t now is just the upper bound, and I'm using a different letter for my variable for integration. So what does this tell me? Well, s of t is the length of the curve r of u starting from u equals a and ending at u equals t. And what would be uh, useful for us to know is the derivative of this function. How does the arc length change with respect to t? Well, from the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, s prime of t, which would be the same as ds dt, is going to be r prime evaluated at t. So we'll be using this in the next video when we talk about curvature.